In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to operate the Zoll R-Series defibrillator. This is the front display of the unit. At the top right is a code readiness indicator. This shows the status of the unit based on the most recent automatic overnight check. A red X does not prevent the defibrillator from being used, but biomedical engineering should be contacted. The replaceable battery pack is located on the top of the unit. Remaining charge in the battery is shown by pushing the button as demonstrated here. This defibrillator has an option to provide feedback on chest compressions. This is only being trialed in the PICU at Mass General. The connector is covered to prevent inadvertent attachment to the three lead ECG connector, which is located immediately next to it. This is the Capnostat carbon dioxide sensor. It attaches to an airway adapter that can then be connected to an endotracheal tube. The end tidal waveform will be displayed in yellow. Carbon dioxide sensors are located in all the code carts throughout Mass General, except in the operating rooms. Pictured here is the view of the yellow connection site for the Capnostat cable on the rear panel. Also pictured is the Capnostat carbon dioxide sensor with airway adapter. This is the three lead ECG cable that connects to the black port on the rear panel. The three lead ECG is only necessary for transcutaneous pacing with the multifunction electrode pad. It is not necessary for cardioversion. External paddles with electrolyte gel can be used for defibrillation and synchronized cardioversion. To release the paddles, grasp the handles and press down on the latch button above each paddle. Pediatric size electrodes are also built into the paddle assembly. To expose the pediatric plate, press the PD button at the top of the paddle, then slide the adult plate upward. To switch from external paddles to therapy electrodes or pads, first remove the one-step cable from the external paddles by pushing on the release button and pulling firmly. To connect the electrode to the one-step cable, push the two connectors together until the latch clicks. Turning on the unit with the mode selector in the on position defaults to AED mode. AED mode can only be used with the multifunction electrode pads and not with the external paddles. To switch to manual mode, press the manual mode soft key on the front panel. The display screen has a color-coded layout. End tidal carbon dioxide values and waveform are shown here. ECG parameters are shown here. The pads or paddles lead setting is automatically selected when the defibrillator is turned to manual mode, depending on whether the cable is attached to the electrodes or pads. The lead button can be used to select the ECG source for display and printing. The size button can be used to select the amplitude scale factor for the ECG waveform. We'll now review the soft keys in the front of the display. Pressing the sync on off key toggles sync mode for synchronized cardioversion. This is the key for alarm settings. Report data allows for printing of recorded information. Pushing the code marker key shows a list of clinical actions. Pressing the key associated with a particular action causes that action and six seconds of ECG to be recorded along with a date and timestamp. Some additional settings are also available here. To use the defibrillator, look on the display and verify that the energy is appropriate. The default energy selections are 120, 150, and 200. Press charge on the apex handle of the paddle or on the front panel as demonstrated here. To deliver the shock with external paddles, press and hold both shock buttons simultaneously while applying a force of 10 to 12 kilograms to each paddle. To deliver the shock with electrode pads, press the shock button on the front display. To use synchronized cardioversion, press the sync on off soft key. The selected energy level and sync will be displayed on the monitor. The energy delivered can be adjusted as indicated. Press the charge button to charge the defibrillator. Verify that the ECG waveform is stable and that sync markers appear over each R wave. Now press and hold the illuminated shock button on the front panel. The defibrillator will discharge with the next detected R wave. Prior to pacing, first confirm that the three lead ECG electrodes are applied to the patient and that the ECG cable is connected. To pace, turn the selector switch to pacer and the pacer door will open. The first knob sets the pacer output, 
which is displayed as milliamps on the screen. The knob next to it sets the pacer rate, and here it defaults to 70. Right now, the pacing stimulation has not captured. To address this, increase the pacer output until stimulation is captured. The knob can be turned past 360 degrees to continue to increase the milliamps. The range is from 0 to 140. Now that the ECG is demonstrating capture, the rate can also be adjusted as indicated. Pressing and holding the 4 to 1 button allows you to observe the underlying rhythm and morphology. Three of the four paced impulses will be suppressed. In the event that you need to defibrillate from the pacing mode, the selector needs to be turned back to the on position. The defibrillator can now be charged and energy is delivered with the illuminated shock button as previously demonstrated.